Right, hello and welcome back once again to the single malt review where um, we are revisiting Minx's backslide but also, in addition, we are taking another pass across Cotswolds mm. which we have looked at before. What was the Cotswolds we saw It was previously? the 2018 release. Right. Uh, this was a, yeah, in March last year, I believe, March 2020, this review of one of England's burgeoning mm. single malt distilleries. And uh, from memory, we were pretty pleased with it. Yeah. Uh, I, was... I thought that was a delightful mm. bit of a whiskey. This one is quite a bit different. This is their, what are they calling it, Founder's Choice, yes. um, which is the sort of thing one calls these batched um, releases of this of which this is, it is cask strength at 60.5, so pretty mm. strong. Um, one of um, 2,500 bottles in the batch, so not a great many casks involved there. And the casks themselves, and this is where it gets a bit weird, mm. they are recharred, toasted, shaved, not in that order. In fact, I think that's mm. the reverse order, I read it, but um, they are American oak red wine casks. Yeah. And this is something that is more common than people think. Um, people think red wine casks, you know, sherry casks, well, that's going to be, that's going to be European oak. Mm. Um, but more and more, it's not. More and more, it's American white oak that mm. has had weird things like American brandy, or in this case, red wine, of which there's a great many. This will be, you know, Californian Zinfandel or Camp Sabs or goodness knows what fashionable red wine they're making over yeah. there. When Napa Valley isn't on fire, which seems to be about half of the year these days. Um, and you get quite a different, quite a different flavour out of it. As you can see, this one, just the last wee scant few mils in here, this mm. one um, is one of my more well-travelled bottles. This one, um, maybe a poor choice in hindsight, given the glass involved, but this one sat in my pack over the um, uh, Kepler and Rootburn tracks about a month and a bit ago when I was walking them. Um, so it kept me kept me warm and spiritous, but mm. probably slightly heavier than <laughs> would have otherwise been recommended. But damn it, if I was going to decant it into something unfashionable. Mm. So anyway, I believe there was a red wine component to the previous uh, Cotswolds we looked at. I think it mm. was either bourbon or sherry, and also red wine barrels. Well, that being their sort of, I mean, that one representing their house style. I mm. guess it was like a coming together of everything they everything they use. Whereas this is, yeah, there's just just the deep end yeah. on in terms of the that. Um, red wine wood so mm. we'll have a look uh, I imagine it's still a fairly young whiskey I'm guessing maybe four or five years based on when Cotswolds went into production I'd say yeah four mm. or five is probably a good pick I think if it was six or over they would have probably put it on the bottle yeah so um, yeah but I mean not not to say it's going to be an immature whiskey no, especially just, um, red wine barrels can do remarkable things in a short amount of time yeah so um, it is weird kind of from the outset it's Oddly enough, we were just um, we were just having a look at a Loch Lomond. Um, but, uh, <laughs> did it Loch <laughs> Lomond um, blend, and the I was talking about sort of weird fruit flavours and cough droppy medicinal stuff, mm. and that's got this potentially even more. There's I'm getting barley sugars, yeah, first and foremost. There's um, for those in Australia, mm. there's a real sort of throaties element in this. They're right. a distinctly kind of candy, raspberry, boysenberry flavoured. Um, I mean, we say cough drops, they're just sugared. They're just lumps of sugar, aren't they? They're, <laughs> they're going to do about as much for your cough as sucking on anything. But uh, distinct, distinct, um, better than here. And as that warms up, we're getting plummy notes. Yeah, a little, bit of, um, a little bit of red wine. Prune, uh, stewed black dorms. Oh, there goes the. Now the name is building something. <laughs> First, scaring me with the hose, and now. Apologies if that comes up, I might eliminate it with um, audacity if I get around to it, but never mind, we'll struggle through. Oh yeah, that's getting Ooh, a little bit of spice, some pepper and some cloves. Yeah, that's clove cloves is a good one, there's yeah. lots and lots of clove in there, um, even a bit of mace. Um, mm. I think when something, when, where there's clove, there's often mace um, when, you're, when you're drinking something, and yeah, I think it has, it has punched through into the mace zone on this one. But yeah, it's very, very fulsome, very, very rich, um, fruity, and I'll come back around, but I think it might have gone, it may have strayed a little too far into that, um, into that territory, but um, we, will, we will approach it at full 61% now. Yeah. See what happens there, I can probably, I can probably imagine. Oh, wow. Initially, oh yeah, no, initially it feels like you're going to get away with it. Um, just on the tip of the palate, that's quite, that's quite lenient. Mm. Uh, that's quite gentle. 
But oh no, 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 no. That, that mm. goes. That goes places. The um, the middle, pretty harsh. Uh, that that hurt. Um, in all honesty, but now that I'm getting into the finish, there's really quite a nice warming, almost a sort of mm. a fruity pastry kind of a thing. I'm um, getting a coming through. There is a strong alcohol, sure, but there's also. Um, What's putting me in mind of is a very rich, a very boozy, dark chocolate gateau, mm. um, dripping with jam and fruit compote and lots of rich cocoa, and maybe paired with a glass of Shiraz or other yeah. dark red there's, wine. Um, unsurprisingly, there's a huge amount of, sort of fruits and berries here, mm. but then an enormous amount of vanilla as well coming yeah. from this American white oak. It's, it's probably contributing to that uh, <sighs> dessert aspect that I'm getting, but that's, that is very tasty and very approachable at full strength. It's... Punishing on a palate, 60.5 will do that to you, but not uh, enough to make it yeah, off-putting. I, I certainly enjoyed quite a lot of that um, at full strength at about, I don't know, extremely cold environments, mm. which um, took, some of the, took some of the edge off as well. Um, not that it's significantly Ooh. warmer in this room today, but yeah. So with, with water, I think that's normalized it. A little bit. That's activated a lot of very oaky notes for me, a lot of fresh oak. Mm. It's kind of brought the tannin out. Um, I think, on balance, I think it does have some few unique um, pleasant qualities without any water at all, but I think a wee bit of water to bring it down to more like, you know, 40, 45, 46, that helps. Um, it just gets those fruits moving a little bit, though you do lose that nice oily pastry mm. kind of a note if that's what you were in for. Um, but you've still got that nice sort of vanilla berry panna cotta kind mm. of a thing. It's made it extremely oaky for me. I think I preferred the flavour mm. at full strength, but obviously it's easier to sip at a more uh, yeah. modest 50 um, odd. But now the thing, the thing I think is maybe this whiskey is suffering from, mm. um, which I alluded to earlier, I think for such a... What's quite a gentle whiskey and what is an intrinsically young whiskey, just because the, the distillery isn't particularly old, mm. it's always going to be young. Um, compared to the one we tried, which was the sort of middle of the road house style Cotswolds, well, I thought that was had a really, really nice gentle spirit character to it. There wasn't a huge amount of wood involved. And the yeah, the, the, the core spirit quality to it I thought was really, really good. It was something that Sometimes you get a whiskey it's like, wow, I wish I could try just the new make on this to see mm. how much of this is just absolutely core to the to the spirit without any wood in it whatsoever. Um, have not yet gotten that opportunity, but maybe one day. This one is really, really expressive of the casks which it has occupied. It's very, very woody. Before it was extremely fruity and vanilla-y, and now, mm. as Dave um, has detected, it's quite wooden and tannic mm. with the water added in. And um, no of those modes is that original sort of um, character of the spirit mm. particularly present. And I think that's a bit of a shame. I think um, if it was maybe half as red wine cask influenced as this one is, I think I might enjoy it a bit. Better? I mean, keep the strength, yes. Um, give me a cast strength any day of the week, that's fine. That can be, you can fix that. You can fix that in post um, with a bit of water. That's that's not the problem. I think this, the the oak character, I think in trying to make a really special whiskey, they might have just over-egged it a little bit with the wood. Um, so through, through their generosity and kindness, they might have <laughs> accidentally overstepped and found themselves... Um, with a, a whiskey offering, and we don't say this too often, offering a bit too much, hmm. uh, a little too much on the plate on this one. I don't know. What do you? What, do you, what would you summarise this one? Mm. Yeah, uh, obviously English single malt whiskey is kind of a fairly new and rather growing field, so it's hard to look at something and say this is a distinctly English whiskey character. Hmm. But with this, because of the sheer intensity of that cask influence, it'll be even even harder, I think, to pin this down as being a distinctly English whiskey. It is so expressive what that cask is doing, and that cask is doing a lot, that it, I guess, um, yeah, obfuscates, I guess, whatever innate character the malt may have had, if that makes sense. It's, uh, as you say, it's giving us so much of the wood that whatever else it may have brought to the table is harder to see. But if you like red wine casks and what they can do to whiskey, which I certainly do, um, then, yeah, this is a kind of a, a borderline symphonic expression yeah. of what red wine Casts are capable. It is. It is certainly yeah. It's a pretty scrummy whiskey. Just mm. maybe, maybe a rare case of an embarrassment of, of wooden riches mm. um, on this one. Just yeah, it really is. Maybe mm. one or two, many moving parts. Um, 
a little bit too many, um, too much forest, too little trees. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. No, the analogies could go on and on, but um, still a perfectly enjoyable dram. This one gets an 85 mm. um, from me, which may actually be lower than the straight up Cotswolds, and I think I'd stand um, stand by that. Obviously, this one made with you know more more love and attention to the normal one, but. Um, doesn't always make something a, uh, a better whiskey. What do you think? I'm going to go a little higher, just the sheer power of the cask expression that's here and how much it changes with water, all those other little details, and just the richness of flavour, even at that punishing full cask strength. It's an 88 for me. Mm, okay, well there you go. The results mm. may vary, but um, yeah. not, uh, not astonishingly so. Uh, yeah, if you've got, if people in the comments have any experience with Cotswolds, because this is this now is quite an old bottling. This this batch will have moved on um, by this point, as will their standard style. Like all young distilleries, their their house style, their house you know releases will be evolving year on year as they get more and more stock to work with, and they typically get better and better. Um, so yeah, if someone's been able to check in more recently, or is you know lucky enough to be um, proximate to Cotswolds, mm -hmm. which I didn't mention, but um, you know, give you one guess where it's from. Uh, <laughs> the uh, lovely, lovely bit of the bit of the Midlands there, um, sort of between, oh, I think it's between Worcester and Oxford, just about there, um, proper, proper English country there, for better or worse, but um, that's Cotswolds anyway, the, uh, what did I say it was, Founders Reserve, something predictable like that, yes, Founders, Founders Choice, mm -hmm. Founders Choice, from the, um, the uh, procedurally generated whiskey release um, spectrum, um, we will be looking at something Actually, something pretty indie up next, so uh, stick around for that one. We will be right back. Slander, this has been the Single Mont Review.